heshima na utukufu Talabazia Kayan, 
Leba zoko tolo bakaya laradi ya bahande Lizo poka li mali ya rede bakaya tala bazekete Li mari ya katala bazete li mahande bezaya Le repala mazi ya katala masahe Waba tumekuja kukutana na wewe ya subu ya leo Wewe ulie kufa na ukafufuka Jehovah Dio tumekuja kukutana na wewe ya subu ya leo Mana wewe buwana ni chanzo cha uhai wetu Wewe buwana ni chanzo cha amani yetu Wewe buwana ni chanzo cha afya yetu Dio mana subu ya leo tumekuja kukutana na wewe buwana Tumekuja ukanene na si Jehovah Tumekuja ukanene na maisha yetu adonaya lebra so katala basi ya kaya nebata libo so pala maya neke telele mahani tumekuja kukutana na we buwana tumekuja kukutana na we yesu wewe mungu imanueli pomoja nasi tumekuja kukutana na we asubu ya leo wewe haja ya mioyo yetu buwana Tumekuja kukutana na we adonai Tumekuja kukutana na we
Nimekuja kukutana na we buwana Nimekuja kukutana na we Yesu Nimekuja kukutana na we Emanueli Wewe haja ya boyo wangu Wewe haja ya boyo wangu Nimekuja Wait, wait. 
Sai, 
words of you as that have spirit and life will do wonders in our lives. None of us who come here will return the way we came. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Celebrate. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Are you blessed to be here? Oh, yes. I want you to put on a, a resurrection face and turn to your neighbor and welcome them for this service. Amen. A resurrection face is a smiley face. Amen. Uh, a welcoming face. Na umuambia sika mbali anaweza kasonga mbele because uh, the chairs are still very open so if you're seated very far you can just come ahead uh, where you see an empty chair amen 
Are you glad to be here? Amen. So thank you so much for coming. Today we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. I death was defeated. That is why you cannot die now. It is not possible. Praise the name of the living God. So I want us to appreciate the praise and worship from Makofi Mazuri. Just appreciate them. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Bwana Bariki. Thank you so much, our band, our instrumentalists. Mungu wazidi kuwainua. Hallelujah. So you can have your seat. I want to especially thank God for this opportunity. It is always a privilege to minister the word of God to us. I don't take it for granted. I also want to thank our Father for giving me the opportunity to be able to exercise the gifting ambao Bwana amenipatia. Amen. Thank you so much, Daddy. And thank you for coming. Hallelujah. You would have chosen to come to the last service, but you're here. Amen. So God bless you. Our online church, you are welcome. And stay tuned. Uh, do not touch that. Don't scroll down. Amen. So Mark chapter 16, verse 1 to 7. My message today is in the spirit of Easter. So we are just going to honor Christ and to remind ourselves of why we are here. Hallelujah. Because many times we we run so fast. Amen. So I'll read from verse 1 to 7. The Bible says, Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they might come and anoint him. That is Jesus. Verse 2. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, I wanted to take note of that, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us. So that was a big issue for them. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away for it was very large. Amen. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. And then he said, he is risen. Hey! He is not here. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor Mwambie, he is risen. Uyo hata ataki kabisa. Turn, turn to the other one Mwambie, he is risen. He is not here. Amen. Absolutely. And that is what makes the difference between us Na dini zingine hizo. Ama? <laughs> Hallelujah. And as we are reading, we are actually, uh, I will actually teach. We will understand how powerful uh, uh, and how real what we believe in is. So the place where, see the place where they laid in verse 7. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, as he said to you, will stop there. Blessed be the word of God. So this morning's teaching is, in, is titled Grace for Divine Intervention. Hallelujah. 
graceful divine intervention. So what is divine intervention? My definition of divine intervention is the supernatural interfering with the natural. Wamepata hiyo. The supernatural interfering with the natural. Hallelujah. For example, you have an health, a health issue and the biological description ya kile ambacho kina kusumbua inasema kwamba haina tiba. Ninazungumza hapo. So that is a biological thing, a natural thing ya kwamba we are seeing a tumor. A tumor. Unajua tumor ama tumor. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this thing, hey, is regenerating very fast. In three weeks, you will not, you will not be here. And then God comes and does a supernatural thing. So that is divine intervention. Sema amen. amen. Hallelujah. Am I communicating? So now, grace for divine intervention. So divine intervention is the supernatural interfering in the natural. Amen. And as we will continue in this topic, we will realize that one of the benefits of the death and resurrection of Jesus to all of us was the grace for divine intervention. Let us go on. So divine intervention simply means that God, and this is sweet, God has come to town. Awajelewa hiyo. Inamaanisha yani mzee wa kazi amekutembelea. Ame Are you feeling me? <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Matthew chapter 9 verse 7 to 8. It means that the one who can change things in your life has visited you. Hallelujah. So that is one of the benefits that we receive as Christians. Because the resurrection of Jesus ushered in divine intervention for all of us. So all of us are able to be beneficiaries. Am I communicating? Of the help that comes from heaven. And he arose and departed to his house. And then verse 8 in Asemaji. Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God who had given such power to men. So what happened there? Jesus healed a man who was sick for many years. And such a thing had never happened. So God visited them in such a supernatural way. Aliwa <laughs> tembelea. This, this Resurrection Sunday, may God visit your home. Aizo amina niza watu wambele tu. This Resurrection Sunday, ah, may God visit your job. Asante, naona inendelea kufika. This Resurrection Sunday, siu yesu aliefufuka jamani, atembele maisha yako. Hallelujah. So that you can begin to be a wonder in the name of Jesus. Say my amen. amen. So if you're writing and he through the death and the resurrection of Jesus, all of us, including those who are watching us via the online church, can now enjoy divine intervention as God's children. And I will explain why I am saying that. Hallelujah. Matthew 27, 51. All of us can now enjoy. Amen. Sisi wote sasa tunaweza tukabarikiwa 
na zile baraka ambazo Mungu alitupatia. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, let us read that scripture. This is powerful. Then behold, maandike nasema, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks split. Hallelujah. Are you loving this teaching? Now, why was the veil torn into two? Kazi ya pazia ni nini? Situonge na wewe. Eh? Kuzuia, isn't it? Inazuia usione upande mwingine. And that is how we were for many years before the coming of Jesus. Hallelujah. Only a select few were able to enjoy the wonders of divine intervention. And I will explain. Okay, let me, let me come down to this. You see, and Papa always tells us here, whatever happens, what human beings do is just a replica of what God did. Even now, kuna people who are still garnering for the rights of women. Am I talking? There are people who are fighting for the rights of the disabled. Squeezy, you know, the disabled are not called disabled. Ama ujuyo. If you call them that, unezo kafungwa. Eh? Telling you. Anasifu. Wano wanaito sijui, they are differently enabled. Eh. Awaitu vile wo unawaita. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Sa, siku hizi huwezi ita mtu mwenye ako insane. Yes, you, you can't call them at sasa huyu ame is insanity. Ah, unaweza kapeleka ushtakiwe umetusi mtu. So there are people who are garnering for the rights of people. So what am I trying to say is that over time am I talking when God created us are you following this teaching? He wanted all of us to enjoy the benefits of being with him. But when the man fell, I don't know what happened. But a certain kind of tribe, sasa ndiyo wakawa karibu na mungu kutushinda sisi. Those were the Israelites. Are, are you now following me? Glory to God. Now, the desire of God over time was that Ata na wa Africa now watamurudia. Ata na wa Chinese now watarudi kwake na wa enjoy his baraka. Acha <laughs> niende. Let me not get ahead of myself. If you're writing andika hii. This is a reaction ambaye tunaongelea hii. It's not just an issue of you seeing people carrying cross on the road. It is a very serious issue. Hallelujah. It is more than the citation of a rosary. The resurrection of Christ ushered us into a new realm of spiritual dividends. <laughs> hey! Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 to 20. Are you there sir? Ah, mnasikia hiyo sasa. So ile pazia ya Matthew chapter 27 verse 51 ili tupatia one of the dividends that we have is this. Can we read all of us? One, two, three, go. Therefore brethren, sisi ambao tumeka hapa having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Tuache hapo kwanza. So one of the things that Bwana ametupatia kwa kupasua ile pazia. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Is that all of us are able to enter. We are able 
to have the boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Say my amen. amen. Verse 20. And then he says, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. Seem to say amen. amen. So if you have studied, because we can't go there, it is a whole topic. If you have studied how the tabernacle of the, of the Israelites were, ilikuwa na sections kama ngapi? Tatu, isn't it? There was the outer court, the inner court, and the most holy. Amen. So, unge wae jaribu kuingia the most holy. Na pia, there are people who never had entered into the inner court. Watu walikuwa na language tu hapo inje. Hapo inje. Hallelujah. Tena zaidi, you must be a Jew, an Israelite, for you to benefit that. So when Christ died, according to Matthew 27, 51, he tore that veil. And he said, hey, omuru kaingia hapo. Hallelujah. Mwangi anaweza kaingia. Mwangi o ungepatika na wapi. Njoroge wewe. Ungepatika na wapi. Na hiyo ngozi ngumu yako. Ungepatika na wapi. Hallelujah. Omondi. Ungeingiaje kwa hiyo veil. Situpigi Yesu makofi mazuri jamani. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Musioka. Ungepatika na je huko. Hey. Hallelujah. Mtaita sijua wapi wewe. That, that veil was, was cut into two because of you. Hallelujah. That is why we have no fear coming to church, celebrating our God because that veil was torn. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So why is it important to understand the dividends of divine intervention. Number one, mm, is that entering through that veil, I want you to write this, was a preserve of a particular community. Are you getting that English? Preserve. Preserve. Turn to your, to your, to your neighbor and be a preserve. <laughs> preserve ni nini? Uh, preserve is a privilege. You know, it is yeah, it was left for a certain kind of people. A certain kind of tribe. Haikuwa ya kila mtu. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 to 13. And this scripture is so powerful. If you will not hear everything else that this pastor is, is preaching. Just catch this verse. And now utabarikiwa. Hallelujah. Oh! <laughs> and this is so powerful. Manike nasema hivi. Therefore, this is Paul preaching. Remember that you, where mba umeka hapa, and you that are on the online church. Once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the, the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. Verse 12, he says that at that time you were without Christ. Unasikia, before the veil was torn, Paulo anatukumbusha anasema kwamba nyinyi mulikuwa hamna Kristo. Unasikia? Alaba anasema, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And strangers from the covenants of promise. Alaba na dukumbusha kwamba kabla hiyo pazia haija pasuliwa. You were having no hope. And without God in the world. Hawa ni kama wajelewa. Labda tupatie NLT. Ineze kaongea kizungu ambaye wanaelewa. Sikia hii. In those days, before Christ died and resurrected, 
you were living apart from Christ. Unasikia? And then he says that you were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. Then he says, and you did not know the covenant promises of the covenant promises God had made to them. And then he tells us, Kabisi Akamba, you lived in this world without God and without hope. That is how we were. <laughs> Before Christ came. Hallelujah. Hai, si mungu alituurumia jamani. Sema amen. So this grace for divine intervention is so crucial. Because mungu alifungua ile pazia, ili ata na sisi pia, tuweze sasa tuka enjoy baraka za kutembelewa na mungu. Mutu aseme Amen. So what does it mean when Paul says that we were without Christ in this world? Where we have just read. It means that we were heathens. We were heathens. We had no God to rescue us. Matthew 15 verse 26. See, I'm saying that Leo is teaching. Yeah, Leo is teaching. Leo is teaching. Leo is teaching. To kisema amen. We want to really understand. <laughs> Kila, you know, there are people who get saved. Na wanachezea ii wokovu because hawajui kile yeso alitufanya. Hallelujah. Have you ever asked yourself why? As a reason. Not, it's not very far. Have you ever asked yourself why? Your grandfather, not your great grandfather. Alikuwa bado mchawe mkubwa. So you can, you can imagine the situation that we were in 2,000 years ago. How Africa was. Ah, wajelewa. Si kitambo babu yako was a fetish man. Unaelewa hiyo? Si kitambo. Sasa imagine the situation 2,000 years ago. Those people, my friend, who are living like animals. Aya. We all know this story, but I want to, cap to capture that. A woman came to Jesus, and she was not an Israelite. Na Yesu wakamuambia kabisa, and he said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. So, mbona Yesu alimuambia hivo? It's because... The bread was a preserve of the Jews, of the Israelites. Kama how come you are not supposed to enjoy anything? Even the Yesu ametufanya. Hallelujah. So now we were without Christ. We were living as heathens. We had nothing. Yani hatukuwa na mungu sisi. Hallelujah. But the veil was torn. So that now we are able to receive the bread that Jesus is talking here. So you say me, amen. amen. Say me, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Then number two, he says there in Ephesians 2, 12, that we were aliens of the commonwealth of Israel. We were aliens. <laughs> you know, I want to... I want to make you understand why the salvation that you have, you must be serious about it. Am I communicating? Because there are people who get saved and they are not serious. Mugu umoje kuhuku, ingine kuhuku, kama fisi. This thing, we, it has spiritual implications. Mtu aseme Amen. An alien is a foreign person or a foreign thing that has no nationality or identity. Hallelujah. If you meet somebody in Kenya now, na umpate hana ID, na hajui alitoka wapi, he will be called an alien. Yani he is a stranger in Kenya. Ata julikani ya metoka. That is how scripture informs us that kabla yesu wakuje, we were aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. 
<laughs> Are you catching me now? Mtu aseme amen. John chapter 4 verse 9. And Jesus is the one who used to speak some of these things. Hallelujah. The woman of Samaria said to him, that is Jesus, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Alafu mama naambia Yesu, for Jews, listen to this, have no dealings with Samaritans. Are you following me now? Hallelujah. So that was the state. Muyahudi ndi alikuwa the superior race. We pray to God. Samaritans na sisi wengine wote, the Gentiles, we were useless. <laughs> so the woman was shocked. Ya kwamba hata Yesu anaweza kamwambia hi. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Akashtuka akasema hi. You are a Jew. And you are greeting me. Because I have never seen such a thing. So that is how much God loved us to be able to tear that veil. Do you love this teaching? Is it opening your eyes to the wonders of the death and the resurrection of Jesus? Chapia Yesu Makofi Mazuri. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Then another thing that we learn from Ephesians there, 2.12, is that we were strangers to the covenant of promise. <laughs> we were what? Strangers to the covenant of promise. You see, I don't know if you understand what a covenant is. A covenant is a pact between two people. Is ni, ni, ni makubaliano kati ya watu wawili. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So, there was a covenant between God and the children of Israel that was so powerful. You could not joke with a child of Israel and go scot free. <laughs> Ask Haman. Muulize Haman. Si muulize Haman. Aliambiwa in Esther chapter 6, Verse 13. You know, he was just joking around. <laughs> when things began to go bad, and he went back home, and he told his wife, and the people he used to advise him, hey, Leo, kime umana. Na wamama ni wazuri, wana kuulizanga, nini mefanyika? Ebu ni kuulize, is Mordecai a Jew? Akasema, hey, akasema, ah, au kutuambia bwana. <laughs> if Mordecai before whom you have begun to fall is of Jewish descent <laughs> brother you will not prevail against him but you will surely fall before him now you ni mke wako anakuambia hivyo si hata utampiga kofi but it is a covenant it is a pact between God and his people do you know that before Christ had Yani, ata uliaje, mungu wawezi akakusaidia. Because we were strangers to that kind of covenant. Hey, are you following me, sir? Yani, we were strangers. We could not benefit from divine intervention. We could not benefit from divine protection. We could not benefit from divine healing. Yani hatunge, because that covenant was exclusively between God and his people Israelites. But Jesus came. Ili tuweze pia kuingia na to benefit from those things. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Alafu mbaya zaidi, Paula anatukumbusha kwamba, hapo tu Ephesians 2.12. Are you loving this teaching? Anasema, just give us NKJV. He says that us, the way we are, we had no hope and without God in this world. So can you imagine somebody who is living without hope and has no God in this world? Then you are just a living replica. You are just there. 
No wonder Africa we have no history. Hata tunaitafuta hakuna hebu nipatie history ya yetu ya 2000 years. Egego, hakuna. Utatafuta utapetape huko maybe ya Egypt tu maana walikuwa karibu na na wa Israeli. Hallelujah. Na ya kufunika funika tu ya ma, ya ma historians. Because we were without God and had no hope in this world. So by the coming of Jesus tunapatiwa tumaini. Sema amen. Na tunatembea na huyu Mungu ambaye anatubariki hata na leo hii. Hallelujah. Can you read some few scriptures here? Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 to 29. Amen. Paul says, Now there is neither Jew nor what? No Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. And if, and if you are Christ, sikia hii, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So by the tearing of the veil, we are able to become Christ. We are able to become Abraham's seed. We are able to be heirs according to the promise. Sim to aseme, amen. Do you know what a heir is? A heir is, is what? Is a is a a beneficiary, isn't it? Listen, do you know that it does not matter how much how rich a person is? If they die leo he, if you are not his child, you cannot go to court and say, Bana, that man has a lot of money. I also need to apply to become a, a heir, a beneficiary of his property. Kotita sema, you are a stranger, my friend. Go away. You understand? Because you are not known. So that is how we were. But by the reason of tearing of the veil, ata na sisi, wa Israeli wa kwa kienda kudai yao, ata na mimi mkisi na mjaluo sugu, ni naingia na nasema, ehe, I need to also benefit. Amasidio. Hallelujah. So that is what it means. There is neither Jew, there is neither Greek. Sema, Amen. Mungu akiwatembelea hata na sisi anatutembelea. Ah wajapata hiyo si mtu aseme haleluya. Mtu akikugusa na Mungu ana react hata pia mimi because sasa ile pazia imepasuliwa. By reason of that if somebody touches me it touches the heart of God. Ndio maana Yesu alitumwa. Haleluya. Acts chapter 6 verse 1. Are you loving this teaching? Now, in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, and it, 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 it was still an issue, even after Jesus had died, now wafuasi wa mejazu na aro, the understanding haikuwa badu kwa watu. There arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenites, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. So the Hellenites, if you read the Bible, were the Greeks who had become saved. Bwana asifiwe. Lakini kwa sababu bado pia hawakuwa na mawazo ya kwamba there was neither Jew, there was neither Greek. There was neither Jew, there was neither a eh, Giriama. Hallelujah. They were discriminating those ones who had gotten saved and they were not Jews. Ndi akina Peter wakakaa chini wakasema this is not good. We must appoint a team of deacons to deal with this matter. That is how special you are. Aizo, watu wa nyuma mmegoma ama hii neno inawaingia. You are so special before God. Ndio maana akamwachilia Yesu akuje apasue hiyo pazia so that are able to enter into the holy of holies. Hallelujah. Listen to what Jesus told the woman at the well in John chapter 4 verse 21. Na unajua Yesu alikuwa na muukweli if there was an honest person, it was Jesus Christ. Alikuwa na kuambia ma punchline, alafa na kusaidia. Absolutely. It is a scripture. 
Yesu akamwambia woman believe me the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the father alafu akamwambia reality of the fact you you worship what you do not know unasikia alafu akamwambia ana anamringia sasa anamwambia we Jews we worship what we know <laughs> for salvation is uni Yesu anaongea anamwambia kabisa ya kwamba wokovu ni wetu si yenu <laughs> But I see, that's a punchline. Glory to Jesus. But he tells him ya kwamba masaa sasa inakuja where God seeks people to worship him in truth and in spirit. Sema amen. amen. Hallelujah. Number two, so we were talking about it, is, it was a preserve of a particular community or people or tribe. Amen. The second thing that we must understand in this issue is that before the coming of Jesus, all these dividends, like divine intervention and all that, was a preserve of a particular chosen clan from the lineage of priesthood. Mutu kama mimi singe wai kuwa pastor. Akuna. Only the Levites were to stand before God. Only the Levites were to stand before God. Eh? Present worship. Are you aware that even the worshippers in the days of Israel were supposed to come from the tribe of Levi? So kama ingekuwa ni zile siku Pastor Grace angekuwa kwanza the first thing ni which tribe are you coming from? Ukikuja hapo useme amaturuka na sema wewe enda my friend. Just enda tu kae uko nje ya holy of holies. You must come from the tribe of Levi. Si mtu aseme amen. Hapo ukije unajiita pastor papa kwanza anakuita ofisini. Umesema wewe ni pastor? Okay. Can you tell me who your father is? Oh, sijui sijui kaanza kusema oh sijui our our home is in Nyeri. Where end my friend? <laughs> Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 8. That is how serious it was. So can you see, can you now see the significance of that veil pairing? Even us now we are able to be called priests. Hallelujah. We are able to stand on the altar and preach the gospel. We are able to administer the blessings of God into the life of his people. Sim to aseme amen. There is no more veil. At that time the Lord separated, listen to this, the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to minister to him and to bless his name to this day. Na unajua maandiko ikisema to this day inamaanisha kama Yesu angekuja, hiyo ndio ingekuwa the same order. <laughs> so say, amen. amen. Hallelujah. It was as serious as that. First Chronicles 15 verse 1 to 2. First Chronicles 15 verse 1 to 2. David also understood this. The Bible says David built houses for himself in the city of David and then he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent to it. And then what happened in verse 2? He says, then David said, no one, listen to this, no one must, may carry the ark of God, but who? Are you now following that? For the Lord has chosen them to carry the ark of God and to minister before him forever. It was a permanent covenant. In a manisha, Mutumish, kama Yesu hange kuja, haunge kuwa HBC leader. Awa elewi ikitu. <laughs> haunge kuwa HBC leader. Hakuna. Eh? You just be a normal mushirika uko inje. <laughs> An alien, a stranger to the covenant of promise. Si tuchapie Yesu makofi. Hallelujah! Amen! 
atipia muluya kama wewe anaweza kakua HBC leader hey Yesu ni mzuri bwana ama nimekutusi it is true Yesu ni mzuri sema amen it was in the heartbeat of Jesus ya kwamba kila mtu from wherever they are whether wako China wako wapi they will be drawn nigh to his desire the way alitaka iwe from the very beginning and it had to come through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen, amen. and then secondly if you're writing only one person from the tribe of Aaron was permitted to intercede for God's people as a high priest <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9 verse 7. So only one person. So even in the tribe of Levi, hunge patiwa kiti ya ak, 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 bishop. Kama hautoki kwa hiyo tribe ya Aaron, sasa kwa the Levites, sasa kulikuwa na clan sasa ya Aaron. Unge inuka hapo na kichwa unasema sasa at you know you now you hapana wangekuambia you sit down but into the second part the high priest went alone unasikia and then this high priest just used to go to the altar to the holy of holies once a year imagine once a year hiyo ndio ilikuwa ni kazi yao but nowadays we can come for kesha anyhow we can come for morning glory. Ah, ah, you can build an altar at the side of your bed. Yani you can enter into the Holy of Holies anyhow. Hey. Yesu ni mzuri. <laughs> ah, Yesu ni mzuri. Hallelujah. So this high priest alikuwa anaenda mbele za Mungu ku intercede dhambi yako once a year. That is how it was serious. Alafu anasema not without blood which he offered kwanza tena yeye mwenyewe anaenda ana offer for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance <laughs> alafu nikushangaze huyu mtu alikuwa akienda nguo zake zilikuwa zimetengezwa na kengele nitakusomea the, the 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 cloth of a high priest was made with bells so that once a year akiingia kwa holy of holies eh every now and then wale ambao wako nje wasikia kwamba kuna kengele inalia wakisikia kengele haili wanajua huyo jamaa amekufa huko ndani <laughs> ama the bills imekataliwa <laughs> hebu tuisome tusikwe tunapiga story now now you see how serious god loved us sema amen Exodus 28:33 to 35 Exodus 28:33-35 And upon it sasa Mungu anaambia hawa watu vile nguo ya Aaron ilikuwa inafaa ishonwe And upon it it's him you shall make pomegranates of blue purple and scarlet all around it's him and bells of gold between them all around verse 34 skia and a golden bell and a pomegranate a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe all around so ule jamaa alikuwa anavaa bell my friend <laughs> and it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers and its sound will unasikia vile ilikuwa ni shida bwana unaona vile wewe unachezea Yesu hata umefanya dhambi jana na unakuja kwa madhabao acha nitoke huko and it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers and its sounds will be heard when he goes into the holy place before the lord and when he comes out that he may not die sasa unasikia vile mama anasema wakisikia tu hakuna ama wasikie tu mtu ameanguka pepe wanajua tu ah the, the abuse yetu asijakubalika <laughs> glory to jesus that is how serious it was amen and in those days people used not to pray walikuwa wanangoja maombi ya mtumishi wa Mungu yani yeye ndio aje awaambie kile ambacho bwana anasema it was a terrible time to live in mtu aseme amen Luke chapter 1 verse 8 to 10 
sikia vile ilikuwa and and these are the, the custom iliendelea mpaka siku za hata Yesu so this is Zechariah so it was that while he was serving as a priest before God in the order of his division unasikia so there were divisions amen according to the custom of the priesthood his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord so ilifika sasa zamu yake ya kuenda ndiye akambiwa sasa weenda huko and scripture says i think it is in verse 21 hapo alipokaa huko sana watu wakafikiria huyu jamaa amekufa huko <laughs> and the people waited for zekariah and marvel that he lingered so long in the temple so people knew that this guy alikuwa ameshapigwa bana maombi zetu sasa hazijibiwi lakini kumbe Mungu alikuwa anakutana naye huko ndani situmshukuru bwana jamani haleluya that is why you see many of us we misuse this grace and we even we, we, we are even we are even confident in saying you know i have i have i have not i have left the church i have not left god unasikia kwa sababu hiyo pazia ilifunguliwa so wewe aki wewe akili yako inakuambia i don't need to be in a church i have not my friend you have left god ama nimeenda sana eh am i helping you sema amen hallelujah oh so very quickly because of time when we started we read the story of the rolled stone mark chapter 16 verse 1 to 7 so i wanted you to understand the significance of the torn veil bwana yesu asifiwe and i think i have achieved that nilikuwa nataka tu uone kile ambacho Yesu alifanya ile pazia ilipopasuka hivi ni nini ambacho Bwana alitufungulia alitufungulia uhuru wa kumuomba uhuru wa kumwabudu haleluya uhuru wa kuwa manabii uhuru wa kuwa makuhani sema amen uhuru wa kuenjoy hata na zile baraka ambazo wayahudi walikuwa wanaenjoy miaka mingi hizo haleluya Now one of the things that happened and this was a sign to us as believers that one of the dividends of the resurrection of Jesus was divine intervention. The Bible says that the women went to the tomb with their spices to anoint the body of Jesus. But one of the questions that was in their head was that ni nani atatuondolea hii mawe? Am I communicating to the church? But when they came the Bible says and they found the stone had been rolled away. It is a sign to us as believers that kufufuka kwa Yesu imeleta mkono wa Bwana juu ya maisha yetu. <laughs> Hallelujah. Inamaanisha kwamba kila maswali ambayo unaweza kuwa nayo saa hii katika dispensation hii kuna Mungu ambaye anaweza akaondoa hali hiyo. Ah mungesema amina ningeendelea. Sema amen. That is why the Holy Spirit does not just fall on the Israelites only. In fact, now I dare say that hata kama hawajaokoka, hawana Roho Mtakatifu. Is it true pastor? Yes. Hawana Roho Mtakatifu. So the Holy Spirit is able to come upon each one of us everyone who has received Jesus so that we are able to receive divine help from above may that become your portion in the name of Jesus hallelujah so what is the significance of the rolled stone number one, every believer from wherever they are including us who are here and those that are following us online can believe God for supernatural intervention. Sema amen. Can I say this boldly? As you're seated here, kuna Mungu ambaye anaweza akaingia ndani ya maisha yako na akabadilisha maisha yako. Sema amen. If the devil is still speaking to you na anakuambia kwamba Mungu anakujua kweli, ah, I'm here to assure you that God knows you. Sema amen. God understands you. God feels your pain. 
and he is able to roll away every stone in your life. So each one of us is able to enter boldly. <laughs> As we read in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. Natubarikiwe. Hallelujah. That is why in that story, it was the women who first saw the miracle. You know, in the Jewish culture, wadada hawakuwa na uzito sana. Na wadada msini crucify ni na ubiri tu, sawa. Ni, ni scripture. So, ukiona maandiko nasema kwamba, ni wao ndi walienda kwanza. There is a communication that the Bible is trying to tell us. That now there is neither man or woman in this kingdom of God. Sema amen. Now, let me show you the implications of not understanding who you are. Mark chapter 16 verse 8. Twende hapo haraka haraka tu. Mark chapter 16 verse 8. Listen. Even if you are saved sahi. And you don't understand that that veil has been torn because of you. You will remain where you are. Ah, to, to some of us. So they went out quickly. After now the angel has spoken to them. They went out quickly and fled from the tomb. Unaskia. For they trembled and were amazed. I love to hear what they did because they did not understand that this is a new dispensation. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. I see you come and me pata here. Nilianza nikisema in the Jewish culture there was some form of not so much weight on women. So maybe that, that thing was still on the, at the back of their mind. How can we even go and tell people that tumeongea na malaika na ametuambia Yesu ayuko hapa. So after speaking to the angel, scripture says that they ran away and went and hid in their houses and said nothing to anyone. That is not your portion in this dispensation. Say my amen. I'm here to charge you by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the resurrection of Jesus, begin to speak, begin to tell God what you need in your life. Say my amen. So these women went and said nothing to anyone. I love to give the Bible in the same verse 9. So when they refused to do that, Mandiko in Asema, and when he rose early on the first day of the week, Akenda Sasa kwa Mary. Are you catching this? Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. Verse 10. She went and told those who had been with him, and they mourned and wept. And then listen to what happened. And when they heard that he was alive and had seen her and had been seen by her, they did not believe. Probably maybe because Peter alikuwa mama. Maybe if it was Peter, wange, wange amini araka. You understand? So mini kwa hapa ni kwa encourage katika jina la Yesu. Ya kwamba sasa saa hizi mtumishi. Uko na kipawa ya kuimba my friend. Eh, mungu wa mekupatia hiyo. Sasa you, you don't need to wait to be a Levite. It is in you. Sema amen. Eh, it is in you. Exercise that which God has given you. Na utona buwana kikubariki katika jina la Yesu. Hallelujah. To assemble, amen. Number two, second sig significance of that story. The tomb or the tomb is empty signifies that no one tribe or no one people can own the burial site of Jesus Christ. All of us have access to him where we are. Are you catching that? Let me give you this. Can you imagine if Jesus never resurrected? Can you imagine that? Just imagine if Jesus never resurrected. Do you know there, were, there are people in Israel leo hii wangekuwa bado wanachimba kutafuta bones za Yesu. Hawajapata hiyo hao. Hallelujah. And there are people hata wangewang ah ah wenye tunaongelea 
wangeenda wangesema sasa unajua Yesu alizikwa hapa so huyu ni mtu wetu so it could be a one tribe agenda ndio maana Yesu ilibidi afufuke my friend so that now all of us are able to access God sema amen acts chapter 3 verse 15 to 16 i'm almost finishing hallelujah Eh eh twanze verse 14 it is the preaching of the man of God Peter but you deny the holy one and the just and ask for a murderer to be granted to you verse 15 and kill the prince of life nasikia and then he tells them whom God raised from the dead of which we are witnesses uh, and nailibidi awaambie we were witnesses of it and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and now Yes the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all sema amen so it is in the faith in Jesus the resurrected Jesus not the dead Jesus hallelujah the resurrected Jesus mimi hata ninafikiria hivi lakini si ati ninapiga watu vita ninafikiria hivi Instead ya kutengeza Yesu ambaye amesulubiwa tungetengeneza Yesu ambaye anaenda heaven. Ama aje mam si ndio. <laughs> Instead ya kutengeza Yesu ambaye ako kwa inri. Inri. You understand? <laughs> eh? Yeah? Eh, hey, amekaa tu hapo. Tungetengeza kitu yenye inaonyesha Yesu now is going to heaven. Because He anasema kwamba because of the witness we are witnesses of his resurrection and because of the faith in Jesus the resurrected Jesus this man is now sound that is your portion in the name of Jesus sema amen mm. hallelujah third significance and then i have the last one then we I I I just call our papa to bless us. Number three is that all of us now have access to God. Kila mmoja wetu sasa. We now have access to God. Matthew 11:28. We are able to come to God. You you to access God. Ndio maana kuna mtu hapa aliokoka hata kwa ba. Yeah. Yeah, I can see you. You got saved in a pub. Now and now you are putting a holy face. <laughs> there are people who got saved in very funny places. Sema amen. There are people who got saved in the matatu. There are people who got saved in the in the toilet. Mtu aseme amen. Others got saved in the hospital bed. Sema amen. Because now all of us are able to access God. Hallelujah. All of us are able to pray in their houses. Na uone Mungu anakuja. So you don't need to wait for Pastor Arnold to come and lead you into prayers. Glory to Jesus. Because we have access and he said to them by that authority. Aha. No, nilisema Matthew, sir. Eh eh. Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. So he was not just speaking to the Israelites. He was speaking up kila mmoja wetu sasa anaweza akakuja kwangu. Mnasikia hiyo? And I will give you rest. Amen. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle, lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. May you understand have that understanding in the name of Jesus. Another powerful scripture is Hebrews 4:15. It's a very common scripture but it's relevant for us to understand Aha. For we do not have a high priest who cannot empathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin and then I need that. Aha. Now he he again says let us therefore unasikia all of us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may do what obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So kila mmoja wetu ana uwezo sasa wa kumtafuta Mungu na Mungu aje katika maisha yako. Hallelujah. That is why today Papa always teaches us 
that you don't need to call him or to call any pastor if there is a crisis in your home or if there is a crisis in the home of your neighbor. You have that power. Hallelujah. Even if you have never caught a microphone in church, you don't need now to call charger. I, I, I know a very powerful pastor in church. Charger now is a commission. Hallelujah. Stand up and say, hey, I have been taught by my spiritual father. Where is that demon? In the name of Jesus. Come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because kila mmoja wetu ana uwezo wa kuingia. Kuingia katika hiyo uwepo. Si useme amen. Glory to Jesus. That is the power that we have received. Amen. Ha, have you been blessed? Lastly, alafu ninafunga. So one of the blessings that we receive as I'm finishing, and this one I received just before I came to the altar, is that formerly we used to go to God. Mna nipata? Mungu haku anakuja kwetu. Tulikuwa tunaenda kwa mungu. Unasikia? Usipoenda kwa mungu, he has no dealings with you. <laughs> That's why you see the Bible says that the priest used to go once a year. Because that is how the covenant was. Once a year. But by the tearing of that veil, maandike na in the book of Revelations hapo, sasa, Yesu sasa ndi anakuja kwetu. Can you imagine that? Anasema, behold, I stand at the door. <laughs> sasa, you, you know, these are, these are the these are dividend. This is a di it is divine intervention, my friend. Yani sasa Yesu ndi anatoka kule aliko, anakuja kwetu. Anasema, I stand at the door. Ninabisha mlangu. Oh, what a blessing. Nasema, what a blessing. Sema, amen. For God to live where he is, akuje kwako. That is the blessing of the torn veil. That is divine intervention at its best. Sema hallelujah. That God can come and knock at your door and say, Sister Grace, are you okay? Are your children okay? Are you enjoying marriage? Yani Yesu anatoka uko. Anakuja kwako. Awako pata iyo, lakini wataipata tu. Hallelujah. God leaves his business. Anatoka kwa business yake. Yani, even as we are preparing for DDRC, Mungu tayari yako hapa. Anauliza, I cannot wait for that DD. Yani, I can't wait for that DDRC. I'm just waiting for that week of nine ah, to release myself to you people. Aish. Ah, mina sikia nime, nime, nime ubiri, sasa hata mmebarikiwa. Simpigi yesu makofi mazuri. Hallelujah. I want us to welcome Papa to just come and bless us. In the name of Jesus, pigia yesu makofi mazuri, hallelujah. Welcome daddy, amen. Amen. Let's appreciate pastor again. Pigia makofi mtumishu wa mungu. Amen. Amen. Wow, have you been blessed? Umepoke yo vizuri? We thank God. We thank God. Um, Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor you are blessed by coming too early. There is a blessing that you're going to receive. I want to greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We want to say thank you for choosing to come. This service will not be what it is if you never came today. That's why we are grateful to have you and we always pray for you, mom and I. That the Lord will strengthen you. You will continue fighting your battles. And you will continue showing yourself strong. Himself strong on your behalf. This is a resurrection Sunday. So we cannot afford to be gloomy. We are supposed to be joyful. Amen. We are supposed to be joyful. And joy comes from within. It's not circumstantial. It is happiness that is circumstantial. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. No matter what we are going through, we have a reason to thank him and bless him this morning. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So turn to your neighbor, give them a smile. Let them know that there is somebody who can uh, share that beautiful moment by being your neighbor. We want to give the Lord our, our substance. We want to bless him with our substance this morning. Thank you, Pastor, once again for being a blessing. Thank you. If you notice today, I didn't come very early. I wanted my wife and I to rest a bit because we knew my son was in charge. Shalab Kobalyand. Such a blessing when your father knows that he can come late. There are times you cannot afford to come late. Not really coming late, but coming, you know, past the time you always come because you're always worried. Things may not go that direction, but we are so grateful. Receive greetings from Kericho. Did you receive greetings from Kericho? <laughs> Amen. The Kericho church is strong. I received a message this morning that they have begun their first fellowship this morning. Let's appreciate Jesus for, for that. And I told them more grace and favor. So they told me to let you know that it is called Jesus Celebration Center Kericho. Rema Center. Rema Center. Let's appreciate Jesus for so today the Rema the Rema Center was born. Do you know what Rema is? Wow. It's a Rema Center. So it's a place where people come so then their faith can be strengthened through the word. So I thank God. Uh, Pastor Kombe, we love you. We we are praying that you you and your wife Queen will, you know, short so soldier own and don't despise the days of small beginning though your beginning may be humble so prosperous shall your future be Buenas, if you will. let's appreciate them better for taking the step of faith one thing we know is that God magnifies our steps so he only is waiting for you to take the first step once you take the first step then the Lord strengthen and he magnify that step tomorrow you know, some things the Lord will unveil to you as you go. Amen. We can pay our tithe if the Lord has already blessed you. You've received your salary. You've received your uh, you know, business income. You can give a tenth of it so then you can be blessed. I thank God for this church. You are a church that implements the teachings that you receive from this altar. I need a pen as well. Is it here? One as if you letter to Santi. So, Bwana, tenda kutubariki. We have the white envelopes. I want you to listen to this. This white envelope is for, is for what? The tithe. And immediately you fill this envelope from today henceforth. Once you fill it and it is fully filled, just come here and stand here. Don't wait for me to, to call you. Once your envelope is fully filled, just come and stand next here. Bwana asifiwe sana. Ili kila atakaye jaza kimaliza kuje mbele, kuje mbele, then I pray for you even as we receive the offering. Bwana asifiwe sana. Thank you. Thank you for those that are doing it already. The other issue is even if you gave in the middle of the week, there are those that uh, once they receive their pay, they are so keen on ensuring that whatever time it comes, they already send their their their, their tithes. Please also pick an envelope fill it and come here as well you need to receive the blessing from the altar that speaks into your life some of you are taking it lightly but let me tell you there must be an altar that is exalted that has the ability to speak into your life there are times you go through issues and you need somebody to speak i told you the other time when you were releasing pastor Kombe, yeah, there was a time the man has gone there was no hope but there are things we reminded God. We sat with mama and we told God this cannot be so. The God of this altar whom he has been serving. We have suffered together here. The police came. We told God everything about the sacrifices that were made by this man. And we told God for that very same reason he cannot go. And the altar spoke. I am the priest. 
So whatever I made decrees, I say, huyu haendi, tulimkatalia, hakuenda. Leo ni pastor wa kericho. Bwana asifuwezana. There are things that we can remind God about you. And that we will be able to cause. And you know in the spiritual realm is, where well, my daughter, that dress, that skirt is blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. What am I trying to say is that the altar speaks. Bwana Svezana. Na ukiona Bwana e, amekusaidia kutoa fungu la kumi, ujue kwamba chochote kitakachotamko katika madhabahu hayo kiko na nguvu na uwezo wa kukusababisha maisha yako yaweze kusimama. Bwana Svezana, allow me to write mine as the others also finish. Some of you have employment income. You also have business income. You have a side hustle, whatever you call it. What you are supposed to do is ensure that Omuru and Omuru advocates tight. I know what I mean. And then the Omuru himself, he also has his own tights. And the woman of God also has his own income. No. So when all that is combined, it ensures that the law firm is secured, the employment income is secured, the other business income is secured. I'm using it because that is my son, and he will not take an offense. Please lift that. I pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you because of what your sons and daughters are holding into their hands, willing to release a portion of what you've given to them as a sign that they are good steward of the resources you've released upon them. In your word, you stated that, Lord, you will ensure that the devourer is rebuked in their lives. Oh, I pray, Jehovah God, that you do so. Rebuke every devourer in their lives. Whatever be it in marriage, if the devourer comes in terms of businesses and challenges financially, may that devourer be rebuked in the name of Jesus. How I pray that you open a window from heaven, release a blessing, let favor locate them, let them receive abundance of what they are giving today, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now that those hands are released, may the blessing of the Lord be activated from this altar which they are connecting to. And may those hands never come down in begging, in lack, in any challenge financially. And as I receive this tithe on your behalf, Lord, I pray, may they receive that blessing and may it be permanent in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, you can give it to me. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Mungu wa kubariki. Mungu wa mani wa bariki. Mungu wa kubariki. Bariki wa saidi. Mungu wa kubariki. Mungu wa mani ya kubariki. Wana kubariki. Wana. Now you have paid tight. Now I need offering. Now you go and pick an offering. God bless you. 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 Amen. Amen. Are we blessed? Glory to God. Now the offerings can come. Please bring all the other offerings. Father, I thank you. As we bless you with our offering, we pray that you bless each and every one of them and cause them, Lord, to have an open heaven and the favor of the Lord to locate them in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, let's come and give unto the Lord our offering as well. Mpatia buwana sadaka zetu. Fungu letu lakumi. Chochote buwana fungu lakumi tumetupeana. Haya basi. Kuna matoleo mingine ambayo nataka nieleze vizuri. Kuja ni tu hapa. Kuja ni hapa tumtole buwana. Kuna matoleo mingine ambayo nataka tumambie buwana sante kwa jili ya yao. Matoleo hayo basi ni ya uh...